So if you guys don't know, I'm part of a Gwent team called Team Legacy and I make content for that team. However, we do have a really competitive side as well. So whenever you look at some of the major tournaments like the Opens or the Masters, there's always going to be like a Team Legacy player in those tournaments, right? And this deck was made by Lirio, who's currently top 25 on the pro ladder for 10.5. And it's a self wound Skellige, Ursine Ritual deck. And it's been a very long time since I've played something like this because we were in muzzle meta not too long ago. So when muzzle got the buff to 10 provisions and 6 C's power, it just really prevented this from working, right? Being able to take away the Sigvald or the Melusine or the Nutcalis, right? A lot of these things were really important to us and then just heat waving one of the other threats. But now we're playing in a lot of decks that are 9 and under. The, you know, the Golden Necker, Siri Nova, Erendite type meta. So this deck is really taking off. And when I checked Lirio's stats, when I made this video, he was at 2542 MMR with Skellige. And I'm assuming that he used this list or a variant of it because it was brought to a recent tournament. That's where I found the list. And, um, you know, obviously you want to test the proof of concept before you go and play it on a big stage. So... I'm just guessing. I'd have to ask if this is the exact deck, but since then he's 2551. Great score. And since then I've been doing really well with it as well. I played it for maybe 8 to 10 games another day, and I came back and I played a few more games today, and the win rate is very high with this deck. So I'll pull it up real quick with you guys. Here's my most recent matches. You could see we have tons of 2-0s, right? And you know, a loss is bound to happen once in a while. Syndicate's quite deadly with Philippa, with the Horson uh, Jr. Like a lot of ways we can, you know, have our engines removed and answered and stuff like that. So that makes sense. But the Relics matchup, the Dwarves matchup, other Skellige matchups, like all the Golden Necker decks right now are able to do really well against. So if you guys are looking to push aggressively in the last few days of the season into pro rank or climb within pro rank by all means this is something you want to give a try these matches were played in pro right so going back to the deck we'll go over it a little bit because this concept is a little bit difficult to grasp when you're first looking at the self wound deck how do we optimize the points i remember the last time i made a skellige self wound deck i wasn't really playing it the best way but i really buckled down and uh learned it you know, more thoroughly. So with this one here, we've got Fakusha. Play a Skellige unit from our graveyard with a provision cost of 10 or less and give it doomed. Then spawn rain on the opposite row with a duration equal to unused provisions. So in some cases, when I play Skellige, like if it's warriors, for example, I look for a bronze. If it's pirates, I might look for a bronze. If it's this, I'm usually looking for a gold. So Fakusha plays very well into taking back the Melusine because if we can get Melusine down in round one and we can establish a lot of you know value from it, then we can get this card up to about 30 points by end game, right? There's been cases where this has been 33 points. So imagine Fakusha in a short round three bringing out a 33 point Melusine or something like that. It's very difficult for the opponent to tempo this, even if they have one or two units resilience or carryover, right? It's just unbeatable, it demands tall punish, and uh, if they don't have any left, well then that's a problem for them, right? So that's kind of what we want to go for here. Another example could be taking back a defender, so the Covenant of Steel, to protect the big Melusine. We can also take back the Nut Callus or the Sigvald to deal with that combo. We also have the point slam potential of when we flip Vildkarl, champion as Fallblood, to take that back with Fakusha, because we still get the um, three turns of rain, which is actually quite nice, it's a good value. And then of course we have a couple other little things here. If we really need a bronze card, by all means we could take it, but you know, I'd probably just stop around here. Ermion's not a bad pull either. Ermion you know, off of uh, Fakusha could mean like a restore. It could mean we get the Sigdrifus right we missed. It could mean we get a Freya's Blessing to keep comboing and get more engines on the board. You know, it could be anything, right? We have lots of alchemy cards within the deck, so the possibilities are quite endless. However, you know, it's going to be a gold nine times out of ten, in my opinion, with this deck. Now, Melusine, pretty simple here. 
Spawn rain on an enemy roll for two turns and damage self by two. At the end of your turn, damage adjacent units by one, then gain one base power for every unit damaged. If any unit was a cultist, refresh Melusine's order. So what we do with this card here is we try and create like a sandwich with it. So we can put it on melee row. If we go first, we have some crows that could start pecking at first turn, but we want to follow up quickly with something like a priest because with the priests here, they're going to enable the order of this to be refreshed. So we can give rain pretty much every turn on the opponent's side of the playing field, right? And if they have both rows in play, we're getting four points per turn of damage. And it's only costing us two damage on ourselves to do it. And by damaging the Melusine, we're setting up a better restore, right? So heal an allied unit, then boost it by the amount it was healed. You can imagine at the end of a round when this is like two base power because we've been giving rain every single turn, then we just get this ramped up to a super tall amount, right? And then that plays really well with combos like the Nut Callus, where we can damage a unit by half its power. And you can kind of see the synergy unfolding that way, right? We're just recycling the same points. So you want to get the Svalbard Priest down beside the Melusine. Another card you want to put beside the Melusine would be the Armored Drakkar, right? This card's really good for that because, you know, whenever it's exposed, boost self by two. So we're getting an extra two points every single other turn, right? From Melusine just hitting off the armor. Another card we could put beside the Melusine would be the Tersic Veterans. Good choice because, you know, at Berserk 3, assuming 3 power, right, it's going to heal itself so we can get free damage off this card. It just works out quite well. So, you know, we're not actually losing points with this play, right? I like to have Cirrus Fearless in hand round 1. If you can pull that off, all the better because this card will auto summon. So after you've dealt damage to allied units nine times, summon self from your deck to the ranged row, zeal, order, fully heal an allied unit and damage another allied unit by the amount healed, cooldown one. So every single turn, we can basically heal something and damage something else by the power. So let's say we heal Melusine by four and we go and we just pump the damage onto the Turstic Veteran. That's something we can do. This card would heal itself as well, right? Um, if we go and we take Vild Carl and we flip it to a, a champion and we, we basically take a nut callus off that making it six power and damaging it by six we could damage an opponent by six then we can basically go and heal six and just pump that six into again a veteran which would just heal itself like there's a lot of really cool things that we can do with this right so that's just an example there but i like sirius because it plays for a ton of points in late game so that's why you'll often see me, if I do pull into it, then we hold on to it. If I don't pull into it, then we just let it happen, and we just let it come from, from deck as it would a thin. And it's just the way it goes sometimes, right? But uh, you, you'll see being played both ways. It's not a win condition one way or another, but it's definitely a win more. If you can get this in round three, I feel pretty confident about when it summons round three, when everything comes together, that we're just winning the game. So... That's pretty much it. This deck, there's not really room for Oneromancy. Like, this is something that I'd love to have, but it just doesn't fit. Royal Decree is going to be really good in this case instead. So play a unit from our deck. You'll notice here that we just, we really care about the units. We do have a tutor for the alchemy, and we have ways to replay alchemies we've already played, right? And we can even go as far as taking Vakusha on either of these, right? So we have those ways. I think that units are the most important. Because if we don't have Vakusha, if we don't have Melusine, if we miss Nut the Callus, if we miss Sigvald, and in some cases Bride of the Sea or Ermion, we just don't win the game. You know what I'd like to say, right? We want to have all our combo pieces, or at least most of them. It's okay if we miss one or something like that, but when we start missing two plus, it's bad. I don't think Vildkarl and under are really considered like the combo pieces I'm talking about. It's mainly our top end golds, right? Less the defender maybe. But um, yeah, there's quite a few cards that we just need to have. So Royal Decree just makes sense. In order to make sure we thin a bit more too, we've got space for Knickers, which kind of makes up for not having the Onero, right? We thin out quickly. It's a little bit of a tempo play. You know, we've got those types of things. But if you look carefully, we've got one thin, two thins. We've got the three here technically and we've got the four so it isn't as bad as it looks and i think doing it this way with ermion because i never used to put ermion in the deck until i saw lyria's version i wasn't putting this card right and um this really helps kind of smooth things out 
and, and and make it roll out that much better. So I think it's a great addition to have. But uh, yeah, that's the plan here. Um, Defender, obviously, because we want things to stick. There's a lot of important engines so that if the opponent has a Yennefer's Invocation or something like that or a Heat Wave, you know, we can sort of play around that with the Defender. We've got Sigdruff is right to bring back one of the important engines, whether it be usually Nut Callus, Sigvald, um, Defender, or Melusine, or the targets with the Resurrections from Sigdruff is right, you know? We've got another way to get it too. If we have enough rain on the board with Melusine, this card works quite well because play an alchemy from gray with four or less provision, increase the cost by the total duration of rain or storm, like and storm on your opponent's side. So, you know, we put um, we put four rain, and all of a sudden now we're replaying a Sigdrifus right, which means we could take out another Melusine or another top tier gold. So that's kind of one of the main reasons why Bride's there, but Bride has some really good bronze cards to pull as well. So I don't feel bad taking anything really off of it. Talked about the purpose of this. Sigvald's a really cool interaction. So whenever this unit is damaged by other non-status abilities, gain bleeding for the same duration instead. Order damage a unit by the duration of bleeding on self, then purify self. It was if it's an enemy unit, damage self by the same amount. If it's an ally unit, boost self by the same amount. So what I normally like to do is I normally like to beat something down with Melusine to like one point. I like to put a couple Marjoroms or something on the Sig Vault. And then I like to maybe take the rest of my leader off it if we have no other options. You can even go as far as taking Nut Callus off of it after it's had the Marjoroms, right? Because think of it this way. Um, this is boosting this directly by nine points because it's not taking the damage. It's taking the bleeding. So the bleeding is going to be stored, plus we get the 9 boost. Then once this is really tall, this has such a bigger ceiling to hit this on. Like if this is 20 points, then you're getting 10 off this, and you're hitting an enemy unit by 10. So imagine you're playing into relics, you're just killing something every single turn. And then at the end, this has like 40, 50 bleeding on it. And then you just basically hit off like a 1 point Fakusha because it was chiseled down by Melusine or a 2 point Ermion and boost yourself by like 40 points. It's ridiculous, right? So it's kind of a win condition there. Um, we've got a lock just in case we need it, right? Because we're not super control heavy. We don't have heat wave or anything like that. So I feel pretty confident. You'll see Dereg Array in a lot of my lists. You'll see Dereg Array in a lot of his lists. I think it's a pretty good card just when you don't have a lot of control. Maxi's something good here too because there are times where the hand draw in round one is really funky. And we need to make sure that we're going to get what we need later on to win the game. So Maxi kind of helps do that. We do have four ways to thin, but making sure that we draw our thins, like our ermine and stuff, you know, and, and some of our top golds naturally would be kind of nice. So we have that there. Freya is just to take something back. Freya is obviously going to work for one of these three cards, right? More than often, you'll find it's a priest because you want to have a cultist for Melusine. But uh, it could be pretty much anything, right? It's play from Grave, so this will get damaged when you play it. Sometimes you want to pull a Drakkar for some more Marjoroms. You know, you've got options, right? Mahakam Ale is one of those things where, you know, it gives us a higher ceiling on the Sig Vault. It also unlocks it if they lock it. We're playing against a lot of Imprisonment right now, so it's a good way to kind of counter that. We've got... You know, uh, Nut Callus, we might want to actually, you know, purify as well from a lock. So it's mainly for these two cards here. And we've got some Graveyard Punish with Squirrel because if we're playing in a mirror match, we're playing against any deck that's got Oniromancy, right? Or they've got Hengate Sword. They've got maybe Golden Necker if they're doing like a double Golden Necker. They've got Erendite and like any of these cards that are reoccurring within the game. Amphibious Assault for Northern Realms. We want to remove that there. So that's definitely something to look at. Um, if I had room, I'd probably put a Heat Wave in this deck. I don't have room and I don't think I'd change anything right now. Um, another card I would consider playing would be Peller. But I find when you start taking... Uh, Mahakam Ale out and you put Peller in then it gets kind of funky. I kind of like that you can tutor Ale, right? Because you don't always need it and it's not really a nice card to play from hand. So I like to be able to have access, you know, to it, but not necessarily hold it. Whereas Peller you'd have to hold. So this is kind of why I believe it's like that. But pretty cool stuff. So that's pretty much it for explanation hopefully you guys understand how to play it a little bit more i'll show you guys some games uh, for an example here i want to see how many games i've got for you guys here 
Uh, looks like I've got four with commentary, but I do have another eight or nine games that I recorded without commentary. Let me know in the comments below, guys, if you want me to upload that as a separate video, as like a let's play video, because I was going to do it much sooner. I just didn't know if I was going to, you know, if I really wanted to post that, if you guys wanted to even watch that. But now that we have a guide put together, I don't feel as bad about posting that on the side so you guys can see more matchups and, uh, you know, more gameplay of it because I had some really good games. Like I think I had one game where I had 150 points. So I kind of want to show those off at the same time. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll get into the gameplay here, guys. We got three days left of the season. So if you're enjoying the grind, keep grinding. And we've got this deck to maybe help you out with that. Hopefully there's some great things coming for the next season. I'm going to be doing a video to cover the patch notes and all that type of stuff. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do and hopefully they bring the game back to life a little bit i think it's been kind of dull the last two months it was really cool at the beginning when they introduced the cards but then it got stale and i think we can all agree we're ready for some changes but um, i have a couple more ideas and hopefully i can get to them before the season ends i also want to touch on a fantasy draft video that um you guys have been working on in the discord community we have a tab where you guys create your own custom cards we do fantasy um drafts after that or fantasy expansions after that and i show them off so if you guys want to be part of that process for creating new gwent cards even though they won't actually be printed it's just kind of fun hop in the discord and uh yeah another thing i want to talk about too is i have a new emote on the way it's going to be made in like two days the guy's drawing it up right now really cool concept you guys are going to love it it's going to be available in my discord server and it's going to be available for channel members of all tiers on youtube so if you want to get that stay tuned for that i'll be posting it when it's up and you don't want to miss it so that's pretty much it let's get into the gameplay and i will see you tomorrow with a new video so we got nilfgaard imprisonment coming up here first and it's kind of bad because we we definitely don't want some of the stuff getting locked, but at the same time, it's not horrible, right? Because we have an answer to the Sigvald lock if they save one. I think Melusine might get taken, though. So we'll probably use this frequently so that Yennefer's Invocation doesn't really get that value. I don't think they're coup. I think they're going to be 9 and under. It's probably going to be that, just so we have more stuff to play. And Freya's can go back as well, yeah. That's not all bad. Here, we'll put down Melusine regardless. And we'll just click it frequently. Two Mardromes actually could be pretty good. Maybe it's just a Priest. I don't think we need two. Yeah, we could take one back with the Freyas. That's fine. We're just going to constantly click that, though. Like, I think pretty much every turn, if I can, I'll put rain. Even if there's only one unit on their side of the playing field, because we deal two, but we... We take two. If there's one, right? Okay. So, you know, now I kind of wish I had Squirrel because I was thinking Coup, right? Except, I don't know if Erendite's going to be that great for them. Like, overall, because, um, I think, uh, I think we can play around that. Like, we have a lot of points. And then we'll just click, we'll sandwich a veteran in there somewhere. I guess back row would be safer. There's at least two units there. We know that they're probably going to put something here though. No good wine will come 
Okay. It's damaging itself by two, so we can still do it. Here. And I think it's actually... I'm trying to decide if it's... Is, is it Drakkar? Or is it going to be the veteran? Counter on that's four. Drakkar is like good points. So Aerondite's still at one. That's like really not that great. Base power here is at 12. We're going to get such a good restore play. The only thing, like I said, I'm worried about would be the Yen. However, I don't know if they have it because... You would think that if they had Yen, they might take a Guardian on this, right? So that they could just, like, sort of take the points back. Really? I mean, that works kind of well. I think I'm supposed to just take it back. Because I can go, I could just go Ermion into Sigdrifus, right? Because they might be trying to graveyard punish that, right? Which is why they removed it. Here. You can never be too sure, you know? I'll feel really bad about it if they um, if they take a yen on it now, but we'll start clicking it down a couple times. I've got a lot of push for the round, right? We've got tons of points here that they can't do anything about because they spent full leader. Vilgeforts, okay. Fearless comes out after this. Six. Could do three. I could. It's not expensive, you know? I think I'm supposed to just dump that, though, for now. And just do that. Yeah, it really just comes down to if... Okay, do we have the room to get it? Arondite's at three. We're giving them value on it. I think we're supposed to pass here at five and just let it happen. Because then they have to aggro every single turn. Yeah, Golden Necker's been played. Maybe they try and play it again, but they don't have many artifacts. I mean, they've got the two. Maybe they have scopes here. Yeah. I could push here, but again, we risk just like losing card altogether, so. It's at five. Yeah, it's crazy. Melusine at 13. I really want that to stick. It's a little late for the squirrel, but maybe we take squirrel and golden necker to be honest. And I think that goes back by now, and I think we take care of one of these, just in case they have Tall Punish. Freya's... Okay, so, yeah. Looks like this is just gonna have to go. We need Bride of the Sea, or we need Fakusha, right? We have a pretty good chance of pulling either of those in round three. On a pass, we just play Squirrel. I don't think they're gonna pass, though. It's eight and eight. They'll probably play it down all the way. So there's eight, six, nine, seven, nine, 
0.95656. But that was off of uh, the location. Yeah, there we go. So there's that. I don't see the line. I suppose I just put a defender down so that they don't get to do it again. Maybe take Fukusha, right? That's unfortunate, but... It's a 12-point play. Actually, they wouldn't do it again. Because they, they're 9 and under, so they don't have coup. But still, being able to interact with our side, like once we get down other things, could be bad as well, right? Hopefully they hit the two. There we go, the armor. I have, like, not a very good hand for pushing. At least they're not clicking. So, what is it? We take this back or this back? It's one of the two. It's play from Grave, so it's... It could be the Freyas. Because then it puts on the armor, we get free points. Or, uh, it's only the one Marjoram, right? Still. I think we still do that, because I can hit it with the Ursine, and then we can hit it with the Marjoram, and then we can hit it with the Callus, right? We'll just do this now. That gains armor, doesn't take any. This is good. That's actually going to be crazy of an engine. Assuming that they don't have any way to take out the 5, like, they would have to take Yen on it, because Vilgefort is out of the way. And both Erendites, like, I think they sold that one short. It's one of those things you just want to hold on to for a while. Are they boosting Melusine? Okay, I saw them hovering over it. Sure. Six. So we can go... We'll boost it. We'll hit the 12. And just bomb that out of the way. Get the armor back on it. We're actually getting carried by the boat. You know what's crazy is like, I actually didn't believe in this card for the longest time. Played it recently in Battle Trance, and I saw it get to like 40 points. And then now we're playing it differently in, you know, Self Wound. And it's just working out. Damage by half power. I gotta do something about... Here's the problem. It's like we gotta do something about this. About the Vilt Carl. Like I can get it on one turn. I just don't want them to take Yen. Hands down they have Yen.
21. I just don't want to give them 12 points in a short round three. Like if they take this, but I also don't have the leader charges to do it. You know what I mean? Here. Three and three. I guess that's what we do. It keeps us ahead at this point here. We get our card back. If they have it, they'll probably just take it now because they want to just, you know, prepare for getting out of the rounds. Yeah, you see, they're going to take it. Let's at least just make it worse, right? And... Let's take Squirrel and Golden Necker. Just in case they, like, do something. I, I don't know what else they would do. Like, um... I guess they can't. Like, a seer and location have both been spent. I think we're just fine anyways. And that's going to be for the, uh, yeah. Deal for eight. I like that we're keeping things nice and low. Or there's Siri. 27. Two leader charges. I think we saved them, right? Yeah. So they start with eight point advantage. We got six points off of our leader. Fakusha's huge. Sigvault's huge. Bride of the Sea, huge. If we can get these cards, I think we're okay. Fakusha goes into Kallus. Bride of the Sea. How many mulligans? Okay. Bride of the Sea. It's going to be Maxi or Bride. Bride for the extra four points. 50 50. Oh. <laughs> Every single time. Uh, okay. That's fine. That's fine. I think Marjoram would have been better there, but. We'll just flex on him. Get a little extra rain. Having Hengate Sword Round 3 feels bad, you know? Your magic can't harm. Put no magic can't. this to the top in case they pull it, I guess. I don't know. I'll just damage that. So that it's uh, not as good of a removal. They minus one, we win the game, yeah? Yeah. And next up we got Fruits of Yizgith. And I think that Relics are actually a pretty good matchup for us. Obviously, we don't have a lot of direct removal unless we have the Nut Callus play going on. So the pigs and things like that could be quite difficult. But, you know, a lot of other stuff works out quite well. Now, I don't think that they're going to be doing anything with Heat Wave. I think it's going to be Golden Necker. So, Defender is not as important. But it's still kind of important. I'll put that back for now. We've got a nice little sandwich here, right? I think I want to hold on to Fearless, because Fearless late game is kind of dangerous. And then I don't think we'll have to play down this deep. So we could probably just put back the Ale. Wow, it's kind of a really good round one hand. I guess we take Ermion for something like a Marjoram, so that we can play Bride of the Sea if we need to. Uh, 
How do we do this? Melusine first. Actually, we can go Ermion into like restore. And do like a double restore thing or whatever the case. I gotta get down Melusine quickly. I just don't know. Uh, actually, it's probably better if we float Melusine. Because they can't lock it. Yeah. We'll float Melusine and then we'll put the priest beside it so that we can reset the order right away. Beast versus beast. Feels good to be back, guys. I just um, I needed a couple days off. I've been playing um, this game. It's like a, a roguelike game called Children of Morta. It's been pretty good so far. Been having a lot of fun with that. Um, playing a couple FPS games because I haven't played for a while. Just kind of enjoying myself, playing a couple other things for the last couple days of the season, just so that I'm ready to go when the patch drops. And, you know, I did most of the ideas that I'm looking to do for this patch, so I'm pretty satisfied with it anyways. But, you know, at this point, I just want to stay in the routine and, uh, you know, just don't, uh, don't lose that routine. It's hard to get back when you lose a routine. I cleaned up the studio space, aka the bedroom, uh, very well yesterday. Like, I just wanted to make it as comfortable as possible for streaming and for doing content. So it's like tip top right now. Um, I'll be posting a stream schedule very soon. I gotta start doing that extra part of the job just so that I can really, you know, amplify this whole thing. We're pushing 10k subs soon and. It's time to push for bigger goals after that, so just keep pushing this here. Um, I think we just sandwich that, don't we? If they have Arendite, it's going to be horrible. I'd almost be willing to take a decree for a squirrel just to get rid of that problem, right? It's a pig. Okay. Here's the issue though, is like, they, they run away with it. I might be able to get one more turn. It's just, what would I play? That's the thing. I could take a lock. If I lock a pig, it forces probably another turn. But if I don't, then it's it's bad. It's just I don't have Vakusha, I don't have Vildkarl. Like there's a lot of stuff that I want to get. I'd be more inclined to take Ermion. Just for like a point swing. Okay. Point swing in the fin. I'll try it. It's it's kinda bad, but. We'll see if it works. It might just keep the minute, because this heals, right? We want to go as long as we can so that Melusine's actually worth it. Late game, 12 is not too high. There we go. That's expensive for them. It's a lock, which could have been on Sigvald. They're not callous, right? Decree. The scope is whatever. Yeah. Decree. This is an overspend. They're just hoping to, like, catch me, you know? We'll get out at this point. That's enough. Melusine's at 12. It's going to be at 14. Overspend with the three pigs. I'm just glad that I didn't take the decree, because that would have been bad. Nice, okay, we pulled pretty much all the win conditions here. Uh, let's see. 
They didn't play Erendite, which kind of sucks. They might actually push. I think they might push, for real. So I don't want to brick things. Um, Maxi could probably go back too, but yeah. Because the throw card could just be something like the veteran, right? There we go. So we'll thin out Knickers. We can get... Yeah, we'll pull this. That's fine. This will come out naturally. Yeah, they thin. And what do they play? They play two pigs and a scope, right? So I think we just lock that. And if they continue to play, we'll take Melusine back. I think we're supposed to anyways, because Squirrel is very expensive. Like, that's a huge Squirrel. 18 point Squirrel as it stands right now and counting, so... Yeah. Okay, we'll do... We'll do, uh, Sigdruff is right next turn. Range roll. Beside Nickers, get the armor value. And then also we kind of round trap them, right? Like they try to push, get better Erendite value, we say no. Boost by four. Okay. Alright, let's let's do it. Time's up. That's going to be a griffin, right? Oh, okay, they take back a pig. I forgot about that. That's a thing. All right. So, I could go Ermion. If I go Ermion, it's pulling, like, one of these... Which is okay. But I need to put a cultist here. I think I'm supposed to take... Okay. If I go... Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. Here. Cultist resets it. Just keeps us up, too. And then we just get that. Yeah. Because I don't want to play this if I can avoid it. And then we'll just play this from hand here next turn. Like, we're selling ourselves a little bit short on that, but... I'm starting to regret it a little bit because, you know, it's looking like we had to actually go callous. And now it's tough because, uh... Okay, I think we just put Defender here first. Because callous off that would have done some big damage, right? And then... Then the Restore afterwards. I think we're still fine. Win con's gonna be Fakusha here, right? Actually, we do have Cirrus anyways coming out of the deck, so it, it makes up for it. Yeah. Two turns of rain. Let's take this out of the way. I should have put Nut Callus on the right side. Um, we lost the point here. Whoops. Okay, I gotta dial in a little bit better here. Just small mistakes add up, like, you know what I mean? Because. I wanted to keep basically a cultist on the side of it, but you know, now we just kind of we ruin this opportunity. But if they have Erendite, you know, they're getting through it. So 
It's not all bad. Is there anything... I think it's going to be this still. At least we get some trade back on it. And then the order resets this coming turn, which is kind of nice. That's going to be for Griffin, right? That's an easy choice. Um, these cards are just too good, and I think they're going to pass. I think we have to take Squirrel so we don't pull into the Squirrel. Short rounds, they probably take these. Twenty-seven points. We go first. We get Melusine back. Shuts down Erendite immediately. Um, I think we're okay. I, I think we did really well at defending that bleed. The thing is, they have like fifteen points of carry over, give or take. Right? It's kind of crazy. They've used the lock. Just in case they squirrel, we gotta take it back now. You know what I mean? And then we could put the Drakkar down and do that whole thing. Or Sigvald, right? Actually, that's maybe even better. We'll take Rain. Yeah, we'll take Rain. Okay, cultist there, perfect. I think it's going to be like a last turn thing here. Like, last couple turns thing. Maybe this just goes down. by about 20 points. They have the 9 coming out here, which returns back on Sabbath, plus the 6, right? Takes out that. That's fine, I guess. 1, 2, 3. The last time we click. Yeah. Let's do that at this point. And then we can put down the second one. Oh, we gotta use, uh, we gotta use Fakusha. Yeah, we got to use Fakusha for the play. The Aaron Knight's huge, but I don't think it wins them the game. Yeah. We just win. There you go. All right, so we got Dead Eye Ambush coming up next, and it's probably classic Elf Swarm, right? Let's say though. Um, round one, we go first. I think that they're gonna really try and push it to win on even. It's probably just something they like to do, right? They'll probably jump scenario turn one. 
need something a bit faster than Maxi for that reason, right? Fakusha, I feel like if I spend, we won't find again. Or, like, if I put it back. Lock's kind of good for Venadane. I need... We need... Ah, oh, perfect. Just in time. You see that panic mulligan? We actually got it. Here. Now we're just good. Here's the problem, though. What do we put back? We have most of the gold, so Maxi honestly goes. It feels bad discarding a gold, but whatever. Um, if they don't have Heat Wave, then we're going to put down Covenant of Steel ASAP. we got to protect this, otherwise we're in trouble. Here. We know it's going to spawn in the row anyways. Do we lock one or do we do our own thing? Let's just set this up because I, I don't want to start actually damaging this because waylays get through it, right? Yeah, we'll just do the sandwich. We'll start clicking this every turn. We'll put the veteran to the side and just deal with it that way. We can actually lock that right away. Yeah. Gets kind of ugly at this point, doesn't it? You know, it's not bad if we lose round one as long as they don't have a squirrel for the Melusine. If they do have a squirrel for it, then we're in trouble. But we might be able to get a really good restore. We could actually play two of them, right? Ermion into restore. Bride of the Sea into restore. I actually probably should have discarded a Skellige card, like the Tersic when we did the draw, because now I can't even do anything if we have to play a little deeper. Okay. They put back the one Whaley. They won't get the two then, that's fine. Here. Um, it's a good trade. It's kind of some tempo that I need. Now they're going to focus on this. Here. Now we can do things properly. Seen it all and then some. I'm trying to take out some of these Deadeye. I'm happy that they don't have a way to flip them yet. Right? They'd be able to flip them and get them healed. So, so far so good. Torbiel's going to do some healing. Yeah. Didn't play for a lot of extra points. Here. Um, we're going to heal that. We're going to take this out. Just play it safe. I'll take more of that here. We've got two. It's going to be Ermion, right? I don't think it's going to be restored at this point. It'll just be a Marjoram. Good. We we actually won a round that they played Scenario, which is massive. Scenario and the Venadane play. The only thing I'm worried about now is Squirrel and Heat Wave. So if this is looking like what I just published, minus the fact that they have commandos from hand. So I'm not really sure. Okay, we don't care about... I don't think that they're going to be renewing the Venadane. I don't think they're going to be running a lock either. There's not a lot of room. There's a lot of good cards you want to play in this deck that they're playing, so... 
See, this is the problem. If I pass... If I pass, they squirrel. If I play, they heat wave. And they have Onero, so I know they'll take it too. We only have two ways to do it. You know what I mean? So maybe... Do we bait the Sigvald for the heat wave? I think we're supposed to. Because if they do that, then just bring out Melissa and right away get card back. Maybe they don't even have a heat wave, right? Like, most often they do, and they're probably grabbing it. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Alright, so we got Patricidal Fury coming up next, and I'm sure that this is going to be Sahil, right? Um, it's been a while since we played against it, but it still exists. I mean, most often this leader is going to be for that reason right now. We'll put back this to start off with, because we kind of want to hold that. And they will kill something. So I don't mind keeping right this, but at the same time, I don't think we need to. Okay. It's a really bad hand. What a boring way to play, isn't it? There, and then we can just put this beside it, you know, but we'll probably lock that first. What would have been so much better too is if we had Melusine the first turn, you know? Here. I gotta be able to contest this a little bit here, right? If I can get out Sunset, if we can get out some of the plays, we might just be doing alright. This is gonna make a horrible difference for us. You know, we could probably just put down Defender. Defender on range row. So that if they do get one Sahil, they don't get multiple. Or it's much harder for them to get it. Okay, whatever. But do they have two stunning blows, you know? Of course. Yeah, of course they do. That's fine. Um, do we take... We don't take Fakusha here, do we? No. It's an alchemy card. I think we just honestly just keep things tall, as tall as we can. This is kind of scary, right? But so far, zero Sahils. They're working for it, too. Yeah. Don't we just pass here? 
We just pass here because it's too expensive to play into that. Sunset's out of the way, their leader's out of the way. They can't purify the Arniol, so they can't take it back with Fakusha, which is huge. So they're willing to go card down to take it back. Wow. So we got a free round two, and we got card advantage for round three. But we don't have carryover from Melusine, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, if I could pull Squirrel, though, it's done. They're in so much trouble. Okay. I think Restore goes back. Perfect. And I think Fearless goes back at this point here. They pass, obviously. We take Squirrel. They forfeit. I don't know if they'll forfeit, but... What's nice is that they did play a couple raid cards, so now maybe they've got four left. I don't think they have Blood Eagle, but we could be wrong. I think it's just going to be a couple Gutting Slashes, a couple Primals. Okay, I think this still goes. We can pull this, and we can pull this. So I don't think we're supposed to take anything else here. It's kind of risky. It's going to be Ermion for the Defender. Yeah, get everything behind there, because the two points is kind of scary, right? Here. And so now they can't do the Fakusha for the whole <laughs> crazy, crazy rain. They'll probably go for like a Hunter or a Warlord. Yeah. Somewhere here. But knowing that... I think we still take... We might as well play Melusine and get the points, right? We'll play Sigvald. We'll take the rain. No, we'll probably... That sucks. I'm just wondering if I play as if they're going to remove it. I think I do. I think we just let it go for now. Yeah. Get this engine online. We could do Sig Vault. If, worst case, we just take the Fakusha, we bring back the Melusine. It's not even worth that much to begin with, right? Like they could have it almost. Seen it all already. And then some. I don't know what the angle is, but we'll figure it out. Okay. Fakusha for a priest. So we get the most value, right? Oops. Fakusha, Ermian, Restore is also something I'm thinking about. But the problem with that is uh, it's not protected from a heat wave. But then again, Fakusha for Melusine, we want to keep that option available. I think I'm supposed to just play this here. And just let it do that. And then we can take two leader charges off of it. 
This match isn't played ideal because obviously we're playing around what they're doing, but I haven't seen a single Sahil yet. Okay. We'll take these two. I think we want to do rain damage for sure. Um... Back row seems the most attractive to me, actually. Here, we'll do this. I kind of like this, because we actually get points off of it. We should just destroy them, I think. Even if they have Heat Wave and a bunch of stuff. We'll pull out Callus. We can damage the Callus with the Fearless. It's behind a defender too, so they can't target that this turn. So, okay, the Onira went back. Actual greatsword? That's going to be what we remove here. Here. Oh yeah, we get the one. Maybe it's just better to take this. Yeah, that's fine. There we go. Yeah, it's self wound. It's inevitable they're going to be able to get this. So Bride's going to be for like a Marjoram, probably. Yeah, we just don't have to play. 